little bit different from a person who believes that you know, there's a day of judgment and a hellfire and a paradise. The, the viewpoint, the whole way of looking at the world is going to be something a little bit different. You know, that doesn't mean that human life is not important and sacred, it clearly is, you know. But this all goes back to those fundamental things and those, those found, foundational ideas that we're talking about. I'm sorry I'm not, it would have been good to have someone who really knows about the Sharia. That's my, you know, I, I only, that's the limit of my knowledge. I don't know the details of the Islamic law. It would be very nice, I would love myself to hear someone who could talk about the Sharia in detail to explain how about this and that, but it's not in my capability. Um, as somebody's trying to learn yeah. more about the relationship between Islam and the West, right. how, how much problems do you think lie in the fact that a lot of the people, they can't really like walk a mile in the other person's shoes. They just can't get inside each other's heads, but they don't try. Is there any problem to stem from that, perhaps? Um, that's it, that's I think, you know, a lot of these things do come from misunderstandings, not knowing about each other, not um, being able to appreciate other, other people's points of view. Yeah, and that's true. There is that sort of problem. And that problem does exist. I think the thing is that, you know, really if you, you know, you go and you meet Muslims and you find they're not, they're not inherently hostile, aggressive people. And they're also not inherently judgmental people as well. That's not something really inherent in Muslims. Um, but I mean, you know, what is the... I mean, on one hand you, you could feel a bit optimistic that there is this coming together, that people are beginning to understand more about each other, and there's a very positive side, you know, that's taking place in the world at the moment. And I think a lot of Muslims are beginning to think again about how, what is our attitude towards the rest of the world. Because there was certainly a whole time in Muslim history when it was like, there's us and there's them. You know, there's the believers and there's the disbelievers, right? The people on the truth and the people on the falsehood, and they're oppressing mankind and we're liberating mankind. And, uh, I mean, certainly for a time that was really true, okay? But I mean, now the world is, seems to be a very different place, okay? Or it may, for one brief moment, have been like that. I've got a suspicion that, unfortunately, or, or fortunately, I don't know whether it's good or bad. You know, whatever God wills, I suppose. But it looks like everything has been pushed back right back to the way it was and I think some people want it to be like that from both sides some people like it black and white you know that's the way we want to keep it this is the bad guys we're the good guys let's just keep it like that none of this you know let's get together and feel right and talk to each other and stuff like that Oof. you know no more wars no more weapons no more <laughs> so I don't know I mean it depends where it's you know the, I, I feel the world the whole world is on some sort of pr brink at the moment you know, certainly I was talking with a friend of mine and I was, I was saying to him, you know, uh, he's quite knowledgeable and we were discussing exactly this sort of issue. I said, you know, I said, you know this definition that many of the scholars, you know, the Muslim scholars, they talked about the world as Dar al-Islam and Dar al-Harb, which means the place of Islam and the place of war. Any place that wasn't the place of Islam was the place of war. I said, is that still true today? I said, well... You know, Allah, we just don't, Allah knows, can we really think of the world in that sort of sense anymore? I mean, even scholars hundreds of years ago started thinking of a different type of category called Dar al-Imana, a place of trust, where Muslims live in that land underneath a tap of trust. Okay? But, you know, it's, I mean, it's a very, very big subject, and it goes back to... Uh, examining the whole nature of what is jihad, what is warfare in Islam. I think you might have had some talk about that already, right? And, and, and it goes back to thinking about all of that. And really a Muslim wants to do what is pleasing to God. That's what's important to us. Okay? But we know from the Qur'an, God does not love the aggressor. He doesn't love the transgressor. Yes, God says, fight the disbelievers, right? Fight them, okay? But don't transgress the limits. Don't go over the bounds. Because God doesn't love the transgressors. God does not love the aggressors, it says as well. Islam is not supposed to be aggressive. Okay, so if people, if we live in a, a world now where people are saying, okay, we want to hear about your religion, actually say, come and tell us what Islam is about. And before, in the time of the Prophet, it was like, you're not coming anywhere near us. You come into our land, we fight you, we kill you. So the Muslims have a right to fight. 
on the low circle. But how about a world where people say, you come and we want to hear about your religion. You're free, we'll put you on... So we even make some programs and put them on TV. I mean, are we saying, you know, how do we deal with that? So we have to start thinking again. You know? But if the world is going to stay like that, that's the real question. I don't really know if it's going to stay like that. It's like some people don't want it to be like that. They want it to be all black and white and, you know, let's draw the line again. It's much easier that way. <laughs> so Allah, you know, God knows best. <clears throat> we could talk about these things for a long, long, long time. So, uh, if you have, um, especially the non-Muslims, if you have any more, um, you know, questions or queries about Islam, then you are um, welcome to ask us, and you know, come round to the prayer room or you know wherever. Um, a lot of us here, you know, some some brothers really obviously have knowledge. Uh, the prayer room is uh, in uh, Nine Princess Garden. It's um, near the um, the nursery, so opposite opposite the health health centre. It's there, and you can also email us at islam at um, ic dot ac dot uk or bureau dot ac dot uk. So, inshallah, um, from to finish. Thank <laughs> you.